It was a good day to be an Alabama fan. Of course, some teams could have helped us out, and they didn't. But I did get a kick out of one game in particular. You are Locked On Bama, your daily podcast on the Alabama Crimson Tide. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, everybody, and welcome back into the Lockdown Bama. Luke Robbins has me, Jimmy Stein. That's him. Thanks for making this your first listen. And FanDuel is the sponsor of this particular podcast today. I'll tell you about FanDuel in just a bit. Jimmy, Alabama eviscerates Chattanooga 66 to, what was the final? 66 to 10? We beat the yeah. birds above them. I mean, look, it's Chattanooga. And I'll tell you, I'm going to go ahead and get this out of the way. I'm already irritated by some of the – Pac-12 people that put out, oh, you know, this SEC week, cupcake week, blah, blah, blah. Oregon played Portland State, so cut me some slack, dude. You just played them at a different time. I mean, it's, it's so dumb. It's, it's so, so dumb. dumb. Okay. It's dumb. And, and quit saying dumb. play a nine-game schedule when we play in a better conference than you. Don't don't even – A tougher schedule. A tougher schedule. Ask anyone. And by the way, we play Texas. A tougher Texas. schedule. We played Texas. You played Texas Tech. A little bit different <laughs> – so, anywho, um, that being said, Jimmy, later on in this podcast, we are going to have a, set, a segment dedicated to New Mexico State because I'm just going to do that. Um, but right now, I want to talk about some of the team, some of the players that stood out in this game. You know, we talked about we wanted to see a couple of guys. I mean, obviously, Justice Haynes and Justice Haynes played really well. I mean, he had a nice run. He runs. Um, boy, I'm trying to think who he reminds me of when he runs because it doesn't seem like he's going fast, but he's going fast. And, yeah. um, you know, Matt Jones at Arkansas, we always talked about how he was that way, but he had those long strides. So that's what it was. Right. I don't know what it is about Justice Haynes, but he had a nice touchdown run, uh, a long one for about 30 yards. Um, it was good to see uh, Robbie Oots get a touchdown. It was good to see uh, Malik Minson get a touchdown. Um, it was good to see Devontae Smith, no, not that one. The other one. Uh, get about seven total tackles, I think. Uh, you know, yeah, he played, played quite a bit. Yeah, he played a lot. It was good to see all of that. Um, it, it was sad to see Chris Braswell go out, but, I mean, that, that just gave an opportunity to somebody else, so I was really okay with it. <coughs> Excuse me. It was good to see Christian Story get an interception. Um, but, of course, there was we – were, We were getting shout-outs on Twitter when that happened. They know the show is a fan of Christian Story. <laughs> They're really, you know, uh, I guess we were getting shout outs. I think his sister must be Chrissy story. Um, and she actually, cause I did, you know, I'm, I'm like, you know, when you have a decent line, I don't have a lot of good lines, but Christian, the best Christian story since Jonah and the whale is not bad. Of course, somebody, somebody who's, uh, I don't know if he's a sarcastic power Christian or an actual power Christian sort of called me out. He said, well, you know, um, Jesus came after, uh, Jonah and the whale. So really you're saying Jonah and the whale is better story than Jesus. And I think he was kidding. And I, look, I don't want to get into this theological debate. Okay. I just, I would, it was just a joke. <laughs> yeah. We would lose, we would lose those theological debates every oh, I, time. I would lose virtu- them a lot. To virtually anyone. Okay. Uh, but okay. Anyway, second best. So she, she retweeted that and I appreciated it. Um, but anywho, uh, there were also some things, you know, again, let's just go ahead and throw them out there. There were some things that were a little bit, uh, and I'm going to say this in a positive way. This team didn't play its best game. Now, of course yeah. they didn't. I mean, it's Chattanooga. You don't want them to play their best game, right? But we still did. They had a running back get over 100 yards. We did. Yeah, most, most rushing yards against us all season long by an opposing running back. Really? I did not know that. Wow. Most rushing yards by an opposing running back. I because think a couple Jay of quarterbacks, was, quarterback. like Jake Daniels rushed for the most against us than anyone. But by an opposing running back, they rushed the most yards. It was a uh, it was a doo-doo and tin horn thing, a little bit. <laughs> Way to go PG-13 on that. I appreciate yeah, well, it. Um, I knew the bosses could be listening. And then <laughs> Ty Simpson's drop at the goal line. And look, I saw Ty Simpson oh. – put on uh, Instagram, like, you know, the eye emojis where there's a still shot of the ball, like sort of leaving his hands as he's crossing the goal line. Ty, bro, I love you. And we're going to talk about you a lot in the second segment because you have come a long way. We appreciate you. You're kicking butt. I want you to stay at Alabama. Don't transfer. Don't don't fall for any of this crap for next year. 
but dude, you dropped that beforehand. And also, here's the thing. Don't make it where it's an issue. Okay. Just right. don't make it where it's an issue. Just give the ball to the ref. Or make don't drop the ball till you stand on the letters in the end zone. How about that? That's a good rule. Fair? Hey, run directly to the student section and dance the funky chicken and, and get a 15-yard penalty. Throw the ball get a 15-yard penalty for moonwalking across the back of the end zone or throw the ball 70 rows up into the student section and get a 15-yard penalty for that. Yeah, but don't give them the ball. No, he didn't give them the ball because it was so shocking that uh, Chattanooga didn't even think to fall on the ball. I mean, nobody did, which was a little no. bit nuts because, you know, it reminds me. Do you remember in the um, I think it was the first college football playoff game we ever played in against Ohio State when Christian Jones caught the opening kickoff and like he he didn't call for a fair catch. He sort of caught it and then just put it down like immediately. Yeah. And we recovered it. So it, I think it ended up just being a uh, a touchback. But if Ohio State had recovered, it would have been a touchdown. Wow. Yeah, I think I do remember that. Yeah. I think I, now that you mentioned it, I remember. You know, the tie thing to me wasn't so obvious. I sit on that, that goal line, and when I saw that the play was being reviewed, <clears throat> I told my wife, she's like, why would they be reviewing that? He scored. And I said, "I did he step out of bounds at the 20? Because I thought he might have stepped out of bounds. I mean, that's what I thought. I I didn't think live he had dropped the ball short because but again, when they were the reviewing it, I, I thought he must have stepped out of bounds. But you were at the game. Stood. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was right there. Okay. I'm sitting on that goal line, really. Um, okay. I was uh, helping coach my daughter's basketball game. I don't know if I said this yesterday. Man. My daughter had a basketball game. Like her fast. You're like those old college coaches like, like, like Joe Sewell who coached like basketball, baseball, and, and then was a DB coach during football season. I, I know. And I got a seven-year-old who's in school. Incredibly active. And um, like she they just happened to schedule a game at 115. This is her first basketball game ever. Seven year old. You know, they don't really call anything. They can double dribble. They can run with the ball, do all this stuff. And um, so I'm and the coach asked me to help because they sort of split the teams up and it's not keeping score and whatever. But of course, they all keep score. Uh, so I'm watching the game on my phone as I'm trying to watch my daughter play basketball. I'm super proud of my daughter, by the way. My daughter, again, never played basketball before. We don't have a basketball goal at the house. She scored 16 of the 20 points. I mean, it's kind of ridiculous. I'm really proud of her. Um, yeah, start calling her Mia Ham or something. I mean, come she, up with some cool nickname for for your daughter. Yeah, Mia she Hamm. had like 10 soccer goals in one game too. I mean, she's she's just naturally athletic. I don't know where she got it from. I'm getting a paternity. I, I know what I'm going to call her. What Alabama Fouts? It's oh, I Montana that. Fouts. Alabama. You like that? Alabama Fouts. I like it. Okay. I like it. Yeah. Um, okay. So, anywho, I'm watching the game on my phone, and as the play is happening, like I'm going, oh, my God, he's going to score. Oh, my God. And then I, I, as soon as it happened, I thought, he dropped that ball. I was like, really? please don't review it. Please don't review it. Please don't review it. And they reviewed it, and it was it was so clear. It, it was just really? – But okay. um, then Christian Story, who I praised earlier, who you and I love, a hundred yep. times over. We want him to succeed. We want him back next year, by the way. He's in senior day, but he can come back. He had a kind of a he had a couple of plays where it seemed like he took the plays off again. Um like he did have one. One in particular I remember really well. I thought he made a, a very poor effort. I mean, that's what it looked like to me. A poor effort. Was that the touchdown stopping. run you're talking about? It was either a touchdown run or where we stopped him at the one. I think we might have stopped him at the one yard line or something, but uh it, I just remember he his job there was to get off a block and get in on the tackle and he got kind of turned around but it, it just it almost looked like he wasn't playing full speed i mean it, it's like no urgency urgency is a big thing with me as when i watch football i i want my team to play with urgency and uh i, I just didn't see it from christian on that snap but overall he's playing really well and uh you know to me he's kind of like I, I don't i don't want people to confuse us i don't think we're we're arguing that he's an all SEC player or that he should be the, the safety on the, on the field while Caleb Downs is on the bench. We're not saying that. We just uh, uh, appreciate that he seems to be a really good practice player. He's always really good in the scrimmages. And uh, it just seems like he's always squeezed out of a spot. Well, right now he's not because of the Jalen Key injury. And I think he's played pretty well. But uh, when Jalen Key is cleared to play, uh, I think we both want Key back in the lineup. And, look, I'm saying all this, and when we come back after this uh, break – 
uh, we're going to talk about a lot of positive stuff, like Ty Simpson's positive stuff, like Caleb Downs, who I could just wax poetic about for several segments. But I, I wanted to throw out, you know, Milrow only had negative three yards uh, rushing. Kool-Aid, the, the, the punt return stuff. We had no sacks. The only reason I throw these things out, and again, it's to lead back into something positive, is to say we still hadn't played our best game. So there's a lot to Correct. grow on while we kicked butt. And I think that's that can be a very positive thing. But now, Jimmy, I've got to tell everybody about a brand new sponsor. Really, really, really excited about the these guys. Listening.com. Welcome to the listening.com uh podcast promotion program, baby. We're very excited that you are listening to this, literally. Listening.com is an app that turns academic papers, textbooks, PDFs, websites, and emails into audio so you can listen to them on the go. Oh, my gosh, this is a game changer for me, Jimmy. I'm traveling so much. This is going to be awesome. Instead of sitting at a desk to read, our app frees you up so that you can learn from anywhere. We're the best app in the world for listening to academic material. We can read math equations, automatically skip citations and footnotes, and can pronounce difficult technical words. Look, one-click note-taking. Click, click the plus note button while listening and we put the sentence you're listening to into a notepad. Automatic chapter detection. Many students want to jump straight to the results or discussion of a paper. We automatically detect where the chapters are so you can jump around. Data tables. We pull out all the data tables so you can review them visually inside the app. Our users are 50% PhDs, 30% college students, and 20% working professionals. I'm going to fall into that 20% working professionals, and I use the term professionals loosely. Listen, listening.com is what you want to go check out. I'm telling you, you're going to love this. I've already checked it out. I love it. Best of all, if you use the link listening.com slash locked on, you'll be able to get your first three weeks for free. So go ahead and give it a try. Usually it's two weeks free, but you get an extra week free when you go to listening.com slash locked on. That's slash locked on. Look, go check them out. Just, just go check out the website. That's all I'm asking you to do. Give it a shot. And um, I'm telling you, this is really, really cool. If you travel a lot like I do, you're going to love this thing. Okay, Jimmy, so let's talk about some of the uh, more positive things here. First of all, I mean, I, since I have it on there, um, the Ty Simpson stuff. Uh, yep. I thought Ty Simpson was really good. It, look, I do I think if, if Jalen Milrow went down that, you know, we'd beat Georgia with Ty Simpson? Probably not. Okay, that's fair. But he was four of six for 50 yards. I thought he, he also had, by the way, he was Alabama's leading rusher, one carry for 78 yards. Yeah, he dropped it before the goal line. He's still the leading rusher in the game uh, for Alabama. It was a great run to the one. It was. It, frankly, I, I mean, it's kind of funky that that's the, that's the best run of the year for Alabama as I'm getting another call. Um Somebody so called thank you from the Christian Story family or Ty's family is like, change the subject. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, <clears throat> you know, Ty Simpson has more speed than you think. It's one of those situations where, you know, it, it is sort of Andrew Zhao, Tyler Watts-ish, where Zhao, I mean, uh, Watts is a better runner than you think, and uh, Zhao yeah. was a better passer. Melrose is a better passer than you think, and – Simpson's a Ty's, better rusher than you think, you know? Yeah, yeah, that is true. That's true. Ty's fast. He's a great athlete. Look, I'm I'm going to look at this differently than than a lot of Alabama fans. Uh, but in terms of the order of succession, uh, the way the, uh, I hope that it works out like this: that Jalen Milrow is the quarterback until he moves on to the NFL, and then Ty Simpson becomes the quarterback until he moves on to the NFL, and then either. Dylan Lonergan or Eli Holstein becomes the quarterback and then they move on to the NFL and then Julian Sand becomes court. I think most fans are like, Sand needs to start as a true freshman. I I want every kid that has committed to Alabama to uh to do well. All of them. I, I root for all of them the same. And uh I hope in particular that Ty, to me, he's proven he's ready. Or if he's not ready today, he will absolutely be ready when it's his turn. Uh, in, in the future. So I, I think Ty's been great. He was a five-star recruit. I think he's showing people five-star tools. That's what that run was about. It was part of the package that made him a five-star. Uh, I, I think Ty's going to be great. And I, I hope Ty Simpson's great at Alabama 
after Jalen Milrow is great at Alabama. And, you know, look, I told you I could wax poetic about him for, for a while. Caleb Downs is just, I mean, look, Jimmy, we, we talked about it on the reaction show last night. I didn't put that out as an audio podcast, by the way. So if you want to go check it out, it is on YouTube. I just didn't do it because it's a little disjointed. So in the sense of we just sort of go live right after the game. And I, I don't think it makes for a great listen on audio. So if you do want to listen to that, the, the immediate reaction, we also had the press conference from yesterday. Go check that out on YouTube. But Caleb Downs, you know, we talked about this yesterday that, okay, so he takes over the punt return duties, which, by the way, shocked me a little bit. I, yeah. I didn't know that that was going to be the option. I thought it'd be Kendrick Law, Isaiah Bond, you know, something like that. I did not know we were going to Caleb Downs. And you brought up an excellent point that, uh, uh, look, it's one thing to make a punt return change against Chattanooga. It's, it's you know, no risk, super high reward. It's different when you go into the Hornets' this that is right. Jordan Stadium. And, yes, they lost in a humiliating fashion yesterday. They're, they're going to play with their hair on fire. We know this. It doesn't matter. So it's going to be a, a raucous environment. But And so you would prefer the more experienced return man. And let's also not forget, Kool-Aid, if you remember in that game uh, in 2021, he's the guy that deflected the pass uh, right before John Mechie catches the final two-point conversion or, or whatever you want to call it in, in the overtime. Kool-Aid's the guy that defended the pass. So he's already made a nice play in Jordan Hare. And when you make a nice play somewhere, it sort of all of a sudden it feels like the, the weight of the world's off your shoulders. So you would think he would still be the guy. I think Caleb Downs is so different as a yeah. human being. You know, my kids say that all the time. I'm literally him. Uh, I'm built different. And and like I've always thought it's so cliche because now everybody says it. Caleb Downs is literally built different. He is. Yeah, he's different. him. He's, he's him. him. And um, he's Himothy. And um, <laughs> so I, I'm all for Caleb Downs being our return man on the punts. Now, there's, there are also going to be some people gnashing their teeth saying, hey, I was worried about Kool-Aid being back there for injuries. Now I'm worried about Caleb Downs being back there for injuries. Very fair. But at this point in the season, by the way, see, we can't be worried about that because we have to win and we got to beat Auburn and probably impressively because they did us no favors yesterday. And then we have to beat Georgia. And I think we have to, I don't think we have to beat them impressively, but I think we got to beat them to even have a remote shot. And uh, so I, I'm for doing whatever it takes to get those victories. You know, this is not game two where we're experimenting and, you know, Caleb Downs is good. So let's not, you know, screw up his confidence. Oh, Caleb Downs confidence is fine. He's already, I mean, last week, frankly, Jimmy, you know, he was a yard away from scoring against Kentucky on a fumble return. And yep. then he had a touchdown in this game. So, I mean, he could have two touchdowns in a row, I mean, his confidence is sky high right now. Put the man back there and let him return. Yeah, uh, when I was thinking that we might make a change of punt returner for, you know, I didn't think it would be downs. And I think they started, this is me putting together two plus two, this could end up being five. But I think what had happened is they had toyed with the idea of, of twin returners, putting twin returners back there. And you don't want to do too much subbing. So, you know, you're going to keep some guy on the field that plays defense, uh, you know, keeping them on the field, makes some sense where you're not bringing someone off the sidelines. So when they were, you know, playing with the idea of having twin returners, it was going to be Kool-Aid and Downs. I'm, I'm assuming now, this is the assumption part, that when they played with that a lot, they, they became very comfortable with Caleb catching the ball. And I think that's how he kind of became that guy because since the beginning of the season, whenever they would work a second punt returner, it had been Isaiah Bond. Even in warm-ups before the games, people that get in the stadium early can attest to the fact that when they had another punt returner working uh, other than Kool-Aid, it was usually Isaiah Bond. Uh, but I think that the, the, the toying with twin returners is what led to Caleb. Uh, and again, I'm, that's partly a guess. But now that we know it's Caleb, I'm with you, Luke. I've totally flipped. I, I've changed my mind entirely. I didn't want to change punt returners because I didn't want – some wide-eyed, bright-eyed, I've never done this before moment in Jordan-Hare Stadium with 100,000 screaming people. Well, I, I, I didn't really contemplate that it would be Caleb. I would put Caleb, 
who may have never played baseball in his life, to my knowledge. But if it's the bottom of the ninth and there's two outs and my Braves have the bases loaded, I want Caleb Downs in the batter's box. I I don't care that you're about to tell me, Jimmy, he's never played baseball. I don't care. Yeah. Put him in the batter's box. Put him at the free throw line. Put him behind the three-point line. Put him on Luke's uh, girls' basketball team or Luke's uh, soccer team. And Caleb Downs and Alabama Fouts are, are going to win us another championship. I, I, man, I couldn't be more with you. And here's the thing. Kool-Aid's a superstar, too. Don't get me wrong. Kool-Aid is also a him. Yeah, I hate and, it. For, I, don't I, I hate this. I hate this for Kool-Aid. Why did everybody forget that he was number two in the nation in punt returns a year ago? And they act, they act like, like we're doing this as a favor to, to, to Kool-Aid. Yeah, I mean, I, I, he won, won this job emphatically. Yeah, it, it is. It's a shame. But I think at this point, you know, feelings be damned right i mean yeah and we gotta win the games and i think you also you play this with kool-aid as saying hey look we're this is also for your benefit because here's the thing when you do things like this you kind of hurt your own reputation maybe not as a cornerback but just as a as a dude and so you don't want to give anybody any reason to go i don't want to draft him at six or seven he's more like a nine or a 12 you know and so I think it works out better for everybody. And again, I, if Kool-Aid goes back there, I'm not going to be one that's going to roll my eyes and be upset with Saban. I'm not. But I, if you get, if I had a vote, it's going to be Caleb Downs. That's just my take on it. Jimmy. By the way, that's a great point, by the way. I agree. If it's Kool-Aid against Auburn, I don't think it'll be. I think it's Caleb from this point forward until, unless Caleb makes a mistake. There'll be a short <laughs> leash, by the way, because Kool-Aid earned his long leash. Uh, Caleb, Caleb has not earned a long leash. He's just learned to earn a leash, right? But no, if it's Kool-Aid, I'm not going to be upset. I'm not going to go, what is Nick doing? I won't. I trust. You know, Nick was a punt returner when he played at Kent State. Uh, you know, so Kent, Nick, Nick, I think, puts more thought into this than, than people think. Uh, one more thing. Kool-Aid for, you know, like you said, number two in the country in punt returns and all that stuff. He's never returned a punt for a touchdown. Took Caleb Downs two punt returns. Isn't I mean, crazy. It's against Kent. K- K- Chattanooga, you're right. But we also took Kool Aid out against was it Southern Miss a year ago, and every punt returner we put in there returned one for a touchdown. Yeah. <laughs> Remember we had that giant punt return. This is the second time we've taken Kool Aid out, and the yeah. backup returned a punt for a touchdown. It happened against uh, was it uh, Brian Branch? I think, yeah, uh, a year ago against Southern. Oh, that's Miss. right. Another that's right. DB that you wouldn't think would be the next punt returner up. <laughs> that is so true. You know? uh, when we come back. We're all going to point and laugh at Auburn for just a minute and talk a little bit more about the rest of the college football. Ooh, is the SEC shorts out? Oh, no, it's not, but I'm I'm anxious because uh, Joshua Sneed, who, who's really the head of that whole thing, uh, Auburn before the game posted, hey, do you know what time it is? He said, we certainly do, and we'll see you tomorrow. Right. <laughs> uh, anyway, need to tell everybody about FanDuel. Score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Absolutely awesome right now. New customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's incredible. That's $150 if your team wins. That's all you got to do is win one of them. That's all you got to do. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. No better time. The app is so easy to use. I promise you. Jimmy can use it. I can use it. If you can do it, you can do it. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and much, much more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and get involved in the NFL season or college football season. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, all one word. FanDuel is an official partner of the NFL. Uh, Before we get into uh, the – the disaster in the pasture, as they call it. Um, <laughs> Got to talk a little bit. First of all, prayers up for Jordan Travis. That was awful for Florida State. Now, I, and I feel bad even bringing this up. I do. It, it may benefit Alabama in the end, yep. but I hate for it to benefit Alabama that way. I really do. And you, by the way, let me let me throw this out there. You and I have, have done this. I, most Alabama fans I know have done this. We're so worried about being left out. Do y'all know how good George is? Did you see how good they looked yesterday? The, I, I've said it all along, Luke. The odds of us 
beating Georgia are longer than the odds of us beating Georgia and being left out of the playoff. I mean, that's always been the overwhelming probability is that Alabama loses to Georgia. Uh, And and I'm, it it will be the first game Alabama's played in a while since Texas, since Texas, where that was a different Alabama team, but now an improved ready to play for the national championship Alabama team. In my mind, they're ready to play in the playoff. This is a, that's a playoff game against a playoff team that Alabama's ready to play. But I do have a question, which is just simply this. Is Alabama good enough to beat Georgia? I don't I don't know that they are. And, and I'm just saying that in the as a compliment to Georgia and the fact that 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 Milrow is yet to compete for a championship against a championship defense. I think that's a factor. Uh is Alabama good enough to beat Georgia? I don't know the answer to that. I'll just say this: if Alabama plays a close game, and I think they will, I will argue as if it matters to anyone in the whole world, and it doesn't, that uh, Alabama was one of the best four teams. And I, I think the, the playoff will prove that as a uh, maybe if Alabama loses a close game to Georgia and then Georgia donkey stomps their way through the playoff, I'll be like, see, Alabama was actually the second best team. But 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 two teams aren't getting in. You know, only You're one right. only one from the SEC is getting in. The winner of Alabama, Georgia gets in. The loser is one of the best four teams, but not in the playoff. I, I tell you what scares me about Georgia watching them against Tennessee. They have so many dudes that you can't even tell who's the dutiest of the dudes. Now, yeah. Brock Bowers is the easy answer, and that's fair. He's he's a freakazoid. He's also him. But after that, it's yeah. like – Who's their second best player? It's a 22-way tie for second. Who's their second? You yeah, know, who's their second best player? And, like, you're right, it, it's, it's impossible. It's probably somebody at line of scrimmage. But, man, they have no weaknesses. There's no hole in that Georgia team uh, – Alabama's going to have to play their best 60 minutes of the year. Okay. We got to talk about what happened at Auburn um, because yeah. that was amazing. I mean, look, Jerry Kill went in there as head coach of New Mexico State. And by the way, he beat Hugh Freeze last year as a 24-point underdog. He's a 25-point underdog this year. He beats Auburn by 21 in Auburn. It, it wasn't close. I mean, I've already read some articles, you know, the officials and the this – First of all, I watched most of the game. The officials, all those calls that Auburn's complaining about, they seem to be right to me. Yes, did they blow the whistle a little early on a fumble? They, they did. did. They did. I have no problem admitting that. But they blew the whistle, just like, you know, Auburn got the benefit of the doubt when Bo Nix spiked it backwards against Arkansas. It, it sucks. It sucks that that happens, but it happened. Um, and all that being said, you we can talk about um, – Auburn not having, you know, Georgia, LSU, Alabama talent right now. We can talk about that. Auburn's got New Mexico State talent. They I got, think so. But they do. The way the game, the way the game played out, I think you could argue New Mexico State's a better team. Oh, they now, are. I wonder, I wonder if Auburn would win. I mean, what's in New Mexico State playing for the Conference USA Championship? Yeah. I don't know that Auburn would. And I mean, half of it's making fun and laugh if you all want. That's fine. But they, they, we just talked about how Georgia is just coming out of the ears with dudes. Auburn just doesn't have dudes. They, they have some good players, but they don't have dudes. And that's why they hired Hugh Freeze. Hugh Freeze's job right now, in my mind, is not to win games, it's to accumulate dudes. And look, he is recruiting well. They're putting together a nice class. If they get Cam Coleman, that's an awesome, probably the best receiver class in the country. I mean, Alabama's may be second, but I think Auburn's would be first. If they keep Perry Thompson, Bryce Kane, Malcolm Simmons, who's from my hometown, and he's awesome. I really like Malcolm Simmons a lot. Uh, that being said, and look, the the whole comparison of Alabama losing to La Monroe um, when uh, – is, is, this is so far-fetched. Please, yeah. Auburn fans, look, there, there have been some Auburn people on Twitter that are very reasonable. They've been like, look, we just need to own this loss and just be done with it. Quit trying to explain it away like Saban lost to La Monroe. Saban also lost to UAB. That's absolutely at LSU. 100% correct. But Saban's different. Saban is a better coach than Hugh Freeze. It's not close. Don't worry about that. But this is a game. Auburn, when, when Alabama lost to La Monroe, if you remember, um, they had just – lost to LSU in one of the games that was just sort of like, I mean, freaky, just awful for Alabama. 
at the end. I mean, it was a great atmosphere. And then they lose to Mississippi State when they should have dominated, but they give up a 105-yard interception return. Then they come to play La Monroe, and, like, you could see the wheels had already fallen off. Auburn was in a different scenario. Auburn had just blown yeah. out Arkansas. They had actually won three straight SEC games by double digits. Then they come in to play this team. And granted, New Mexico State's not 25 points worse than Auburn, clearly. I mean, they're 21 points better. But they are the, the line was a little screwy. But it's you're going to have a hard time convincing me that, that you can explain this away in any fashion. It just was not a well-prepared team. Yeah. And um, it it's one of those where if you want to say, hey, yeah, Nick Saban lost in 07 to La Monroe. Fine. I can give you a lot of reasons why these aren't the same things. I think Alabama lost to Monroe because Alabama had a bit of a broken culture. It was, it was either broken when Saban got here or Saban got here and broke it so he could rebuild it. One of the two. But Alabama lost to Louisiana Monroe because of a broken, bad culture that Nick Saban was fixing. Uh Auburn lost to New Mexico State because they don't have enough good players. I mean, I, I mean, Alabama was a better team than Louisiana Monroe and had enough dudes to beat Louisiana Monroe. I don't know that Auburn's got enough dudes. As a matter of fact, I went back. Auburn's best wins are over Cal, Vanderbilt, and Mississippi State. And to be honest, as I look back on it, I'm going to give credit to Hugh Freeze because I have no idea how Auburn swept those three teams. I, I don't think Auburn had any business beating Cal – Vanderbilt and Mississippi State. Well, I don't know right. how they won all those those three games. If they played Cal later in the year, Cal beats them. I agree. Now, I agree. They, they caught Cal at a good time, which is a strange if thing to say. They played Mississippi State did. earlier in the year. Mississippi State beats them. The thing is, Mississippi. I mean, look, yep. the teams they've beaten. By the way, Sam Pittman just <laughs> weirdly they, they're going to keep Sam Pittman another year. Okay, good luck with that, Arkansas. But everybody agrees they probably should fire him. They've already fired Zach Arnett. Yep, and. And uh, beating Vanderbilt, when Vanderbilt is playing in a stadium that most 3A teams dwarf, I mean, it's, it's Vanderbilt too. So, again, you're right. And I say all this, I say all this with the 100% knowledge, Auburn's going to give us everything they got next Saturday, 100%. And if I'm you sure. think that we're going to get, we're going to blow out Auburn, you're wrong. I, I really believe that. I think Auburn, the spread's already out at like 14 my lock of the year for the week is Auburn. I'm telling you, I think we win by seven to ten. I wouldn't be stunned if it's close, because uh, it'd be crazy for Alabama fans to think. I mean, the last time we went there, we had Bryce and Will, and 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 in my opinion, we were one of the four best teams that year. Uh, well, well, I mean, we played for the national championship, and we we you know bear, we were very fortunate to win, and that wasn't a good Auburn team. But I, I think Alabama's – I feel very confident Alabama's going to win the game. I, I think Alabama's going to cover the spread. I do because I think Auburn's going to have a very difficult time scoring in this game. But uh, my early thought – this isn't my official prediction yet, but my early thought is ironically – and the score will mean a lot to Auburn people. My, my early thought is 31-10. to 10. That, uh, that's And that, that's that's what God I think is going to happen. And your it, might, it, it might be 10-10 to 10 at the half. But I, I think Alabama wins 31 to 10. And look, I, I'll say this. The, when you talk about a place where weird stuff happens, it's, I mean, frankly, it's kind of weird that New Mexico State beats Auburn by 21 when they were underdog by 25. But, um, you know, I go back to that 2021 game. We lose our best receiver on a, yeah. on a punt coverage with targeting. That, that's, <laughs> that stuff only happens at Auburn. That didn't happen that anywhere else. Oh, the butt, the butt, the interception off the butt in the in the 2019 game. Najee that Harris's helped. glorious backside led to seven <laughs> points probably. If think about that, think about that. If we score there, that game's probably over. My, my last point, and th this is just how I feel about Jalen Milrow. Maybe a lot of people agree or disagree. Doesn't matter. I think Alabama wins comfortably over Auburn. I do. I think it'll be comfortable. Why? Jalen Milrow is so freaking good. They, they won't be able to defend him. He's going to make too many. He'll make too many plays and, that Auburn can't make, and Alabama's going to beat Auburn because of Jalen Milrow. I'm not sure Alabama can beat Georgia. Why Jalen Milrow? That, that is a great point, and I and, love and Jalen Milrow. I, 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 I don't think anybody loves Jalen more than, more than I do, but that that's 
and, and it's really about him on a big stage, you know, like it, it's, it's different. It's different. And not just the big stage, but the big stage against the best defense in the league. Uh, that's best a tough in the country. It's a tough, it's a tough ask. It's a tough ask. Uh, I also think Jalen Milrow is going to very possibly win the Heisman Trophy in 2024. That's how I feel about him. I will this entire offseason either predict it or constantly bring it up. I, I think Milrow may be the best player in college football in 2024. That doesn't mean he can beat anyone in 2023. Those are two different thing, two different things to believe. It'd be kind of awesome because I, in my personal opinion, Jaden Daniels should win it this year. And if Jalen Milrow wins it next year, that'd be awesome. I mean, you'd have Bryce Young. Uh, well, you'd have Joe Burrow. Then, uh, well, I mean, Devontae Smith is a receiver, Devante. but I'm just talking about quarterbacks yeah. from the SEC. You'd have uh, Joe Burrow, then Bryce Young two years later, then uh, uh, Jaden Daniels, in my opinion, and then Jalen Milrow. That, that's awesome for the league. Everybody talks about the Pac-12. Eh, we've had pretty good quarterbacks. So, well, Bo, anyway. Bo Nix may win the Heisman, and uh, he's an SEC quarterback to me. And yeah. Say, no, 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 he's played half his – Career in the Pac-12, I'd say, yeah, but he was born here. Yeah, but he's he's Jaden Daniels is is yeah. playing better than he is. I mean, to oh, me, I would vote for Daniels, but Bo Nix made a pretty good case yesterday. <laughs> but J- Daniels was responsible for eight touchdowns, so that's pretty, pretty good. good. All right, that's pretty. All good. Right. That's going to do it for today's podcast. We'll be back tomorrow with more. Until then, roll tight, everybody. Roll tight.